Hello friends, welcome back to the S3 Cloud Hub. In the previous sessions, we show how we can create our custom Docker container. Now in this session, we will explore storage for Docker container, and how we can manage our application data across containers. So without any further ado, let's start the session. Here, the main question we want to answer is, how do we get access to the data from a container, that it writes during its lifetime, and then store it somewhere, perhaps on our host machine, so that we can use it for other processes. Now, to achieve storage and manage data, Docker offers three solutions, each called a mount. They all relate in that they bring container data to the host machine, however, they have three different approaches, that can be helpful for various situations. First, we have volume mounts, volume stored data in a specific directory on the host file system. This directory is managed by Docker. In only Docker container processes can modify this part of the file system. The directory is stored within a special section of the file system devoted to Docker. This is the preferred approach to managing data in a persistent way across multiple container life cycles with Docker. The data that a container writes during its lifetime stays there, even after the container exits and is removed. Now second we have bind mounts. Bind mounts are directories that you directly link from the host machine to the Docker container. Therefore, they can exist anywhere on the Docker host's machine file system. Therefore, they can exist anywhere on the host file system. The nice thing about bind mounts is that, none Docker applications and processes can also access and modify that directory, just as well any Docker container can modify the bind mounted directory. The reason bind mounts are less preferred than volumes is because you're not guaranteed that the data will persist across containers because of the fact that the data location is stored on the host machine. Luckily, Docker is smart enough to create a bind mounts directory on the host file system if it doesn't exist yet, when you want to create it, but the catch comes with that directory may be moved or deleted during the lifetime of a container or between the creation of multiple containers that depend on the same amount. So bind mounts in a way, are less secure than volumes, because they rely and hope for a very particular file system structure of the Docker host. Then finally we have tempfs mounts, or temporary file system mounts. These mounts don't write to the file system of the host machine. Rather, they write to the memory of the host machine. So this data is never persisted to the disk of the Docker host. Essentially, the tempfs mount is used during the lifetime of a container to store any data that is not persistent, that could perhaps be secret information. After all, the data will not be saved in the long term on the host machine, nor will it be saved within the container. So it's great for data that is secret like keys for example, that you want to disappear as quickly as possible. Now here's a diagram, that illustrates how each of these storage approaches relate to the host. We have a bind mount, a volume, and a tempfs mount. The bind mount connects a container to a directory on the file system of the Docker host. Next, we have a volume that connects the container to a directory in the specific area of the host machine. Note that this Docker area is surrounded by a dash box to signal that it's only accessible by the Docker engine and its processes. And finally, we have a tempfs mount that connects to the container memory or rather the memory of the host machine to the container. Now let's go over and review the use cases of each approach to meet the ideas behind each of these solutions a little more substantial. First up, the use case for volumes is when you want to store data across containers on the host system in a persistent way. For example, you may be hosting your containers on an external remote machine in the cloud. The remote machine itself may be running processes that manage and change the file system. However with volumes, you can store data created across multiple containers running on that host machine in a specific place on the file system. Next, the use case for bind mounts, is when you want to edit the directory with none Docker applications and processes, and you want the container to edit the directory as well. So this may come up if you have a working directory for your project on the host machine, but you also have it set up, so that you have configuration files in that directory that you want to go into the container. So for working directories on the host machine, they need to translate to a container, the bind mount is a great solution, especially if you're constantly updating those configuration files. Note that you want your file system to be secure and structured, so that you're guaranteed that nothing will unexpectedly change, or a move for a directory, 
that you're depending on within a container. Third and finally, tempfs mounts are used when you want to work with secret data that should disappear as soon as possible. Alright, the covers of three approaches to mounting data, to the host machine from a container. I hope, now you all guys are clear with it. So guys, that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below, I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.